Hey, Sky Guy, are you ready, Sky Guy? Well, good, Sky Guy, because your geek history lesson on Ahsoka Tano is now in session, Sky Guy. Hello and welcome to Geek History Lesson. I'm Ashley Victoria Robinson. And I'm Jason Lasersword Inman. Welcome to Geek History Lesson, the podcast where we take one character, one series, one book, and teach you everything you need to know about them in a little bit less than an hour. And today's episode is all about Ahsoka Tano. Yeah! Uh, a Jedi from a little known franchise that I know a lot of people don't watch, Star Wars. Mm -hmm, yeah, mm -hmm, hardly mm -hmm. anybody knows. Deep cut, deep cut today. Yeah, I don't, it's weird. Nobody watches Star Wars shows anymore. No. Yeah. No. You know, I I, I miss it. I miss it a little bit. I don't. I don't think there's enough Star Wars movies <laughs> and television shows out there. Uh, you're probably you know? right. Yeah. I wish I could go to a Target and, and look down the aisle and just see one Star Wars toy. Just one? Just one. Mm. Can never happen. Yeah. It'll never happen. Uh, Ashley, why are we talking about Ahsoka Tano? Uh, we're talking about Ahsoka Tano because she just had a big moment on Mandalorian. She's about to get a series. She's in the ether. Um, and honestly, I like her. So we're doing it. Cool. Was this requested by any of our listeners? It was. We have two amazing TAs today. Austin Joy Deutsch, excuse me, and at Spiderhawk. Thank you so much for requesting Ahsoka Tano today. Nice. And if you want to request future lessons, don't forget to go to our Twitter at GHL Podcast and Facebook.com slash Geek History Lesson. Those are the only two places we take requests. Yes, that's true. People sometimes put them in the... Um, uh, Apple Podcast reviews, and while we love those, we are not often up to date on them. So, no. If you want to make sure that you get in there, Twitter's probably your best bet. You want to be added to the to the list? Yeah, yeah. Twitter's your best bet. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. All right, are we ready to move into the lesson? Uh, well, we're ready to move into the ten cent origin. Oh, we are. Yes, but before <laughs> we get to that, we should not forget that we do have a Patreon over there. patreoncom slash Jawin. That's J A W I I N. And if you like the podcast that you're you are hearing, or you like Ashley's uh, timber, Ooh. and you like my. Um, Dulcet tones. Dulcet tones. Then maybe you want to hear some more podcasts that have uh, our voices in them. And we have three exclusive podcasts over at Patreon. We have Geek History Lesson Extra, which is a deeper dive into the topic at hand. There's a weekly episode of uh, Geek History Lesson every single week, only on Patreon. Then there's Jason and Ashley's Excellent Adventures, which is a podcast where uh, Jason, me, and Ashley, me. her, get a little bit more personal into our personal lives on a personal podcast. Mm -hmm. And then... There also is once or twice a month. We haven't quite decided the, the the release schedule yet. Jason and Jeremy John about Justice League, our Justice League animated series podcast. So if you want to hear any of those amazing and Patreon-exclusive podcasts, go check them out. Patreon.com slash Jobman and support the podcast. And we want to thank our super friends that do that every single day. Mm -hmm. All right, now let's move to the 10 Cent Origin. That is the first section of the podcast where Professor Ashley is going to tell you everything you need to know in a quick, bite-sized manner that you need to know about Ahsoka Tano in case you go to a cocktail party on Coruscant and some big blue opera house person that looks very similar to George Lucas, prequel joke, recognizes you and says, who is this Ahsoka Tano, a character I did not invent? Uh, well, that's interesting when I give you the created by credits. So Ahsoka <laughs> Tano is, of course, a Star Wars character. Her aliases include Fulcrum, Ashla, and Snips. She is a Togruta, which is a humanoid alien with tondrils that grow out of the top of their heads rather than hair and distinctive markings on her face. She was created by George Lucas and Dave Filoni. Um, all of the material that I examined for this um, acknowledge that Dave Filoni created the character. George Lucas created the world, the species, the idea of Padawan. So of it's course. sort of a sh it's a shared credit. And her first appearance was in Star Wars: The Clone Wars, two thousand eight. If you are playing along at home, that is not um, the series. That's the movie, the movie that predates that released, yeah. the series. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll talk a little bit about that. We're going to talk a lot about her development and her ultimate impact on the universe because that's really important. But we're going to talk more about the movie versus the television versions of Ahsoka. Um, as we go along, she is a at different times a Padawan, a Rebel Alliance spy master, a Jedi, a Galactic Republic member, a Rebel Alliance member, uh, and then ultimately uh, she is declared a Force sensitive outcast. 
best. Her home world is a planet called Shili or Shili. I can't remember. I think I've heard it said exactly once. I don't know if I've heard it out loud. S H I L I. Uh, if you know, you can respectfully let us know. I don't think we ever go back there. And she is probably most famous for being Anakin Skywalker's Padawan. Anakin Skywalker, just in case anybody doesn't know, because I don't want to assume that we're all on the up and up, uh, grows up to become Darth Vader. Yes. She is portrayed in, um, she's being voiced most famously by Ashley Eckstein. Ashley Eckstein is the voice of Ahsoka Tano. She originated the character. Her motion capture, particularly in the later series, uh, the Disney Plus series, is done by Lauren Mer- Mary Kim. So shout out to her. And she is portrayed in live action by Rosario Dawson, who will also be starring in the Ahsoka Tano Disney Plus show. Mm-hmm. So there you go. Which has been called, at this point, at the time of this recording, has been called a one season limited event show. Yeah, I'll believe it when it happens. If well, it sure. does well enough, we'll get a million seasons. I think it. that's all they could get Rosario to sign on to. Uh, that's probably fair. I mean, she she's a, she does a lot of movies and stuff like that. So mm-hmm. we'll, we'll see. Right now, we're that's very much in a developmental phase as far as any of us know. Sure. So that's your Time Zone Origin. Let's move on to the next part. Yes, the meet cute, which I think is going to be very brief because that's, this is the part where we tell you where we first meted and cuted Ahsoka Tano in our lives because it's a term we stole from romantic comedies. And I think it's only one place. I saw Clone Wars. Yeah. That's it. Okay. That's that's the entire meet cute. Okay. I mean, what was it for you? So I didn't watch Clone Wars when it first came out. Yeah. Um, I had no idea who Ahsoka Tano was until in... It was either 2012 or 2013. StarWars.com ran a... Greatest Star Wars character of all yeah, time. Yeah, it I know was basically like a voting thing. And the final vote came down to... Wasn't it Luke and Ahsoka? It was either Luke and Ahsoka or Yoda and Ahsoka. I want to say it was Luke and, and Ahsoka. And um, I didn't know who Ahsoka was. Uh-huh. All I'd really heard about her was that she was in the animated movie and everyone thought it was really terrible. Or maybe not terrible, but that it was geared to a much younger audience it than was, yeah. a lot of people mm-hmm. were hoping. That doesn't mean it's terrible. I, I'm going to walk that back. But people weren't as warm on it as they have come to be honest. It's not great. And the by, series is great, but that movie is not great. And by that point, several um, seasons of Clone Wars had been out and people had really fallen in love with Ahsoka. So that was when I first looked into her and then when I met you mm-hmm. uh, was when I first watched the Clone Wars series because that was when uh, that was in the back in the old times when Netflix had uh, the new season. That's right. That was coming up. So I caught up before in time. Disney Plus was even a twinkle in Disney corporate's eyes. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, so that's where I first heard about Ahsoka, and that's how I came to meet her. And you were you were one of the per- the people who. Um, Kept remind you were like it's okay she's gonna get better she's gonna get better she goes along because uh, Ahsoka's she's very annoying Ahsoka's in the first season. very young and very uh, annoying in my opinion in the early season so that's my me cute mm-hmm. okay what's next the main discussion or the main episode this is what Which everybody we comes call look, the, I don't know the main me history one oh one oh that's true I don't <laughs> care I look everybody's here for the flame and yawn and this is the flame and yawn of geek history lesson I'm just saying it right here this is what you're here for yes Ash is gonna tell you everything you know. Here we go. Uh, Buckle up. Like I said, we're going to talk a lot about like development and behind the scenes stuff as much as we're going to talk about the in-universe stuff. Got it. Uh, Because Star Wars is complicated and I think a lot of this stuff is really, really interesting. So when they were developing more stories for Anakin Skywalker for this animated television movie and show... They really wanted to focus on the idea of Anakin growing up from being like the, the quote, brash, undisciplined Padawan, unquote, um, into the Jedi Knight, who they who they describe as reserved. I would describe as wooden um, that we see <laughs> in episode three. So they're trying to give us content to bridge the gap from the boy who doesn't like sand uh, to the boy who tries to murder his mentor. Yes. And murder younglings. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Um, and. George Lucas really wanted him to have a female apprentice uh, based on his experience with his two daughters. And so he wanted something that would appeal to them and appeal to a young female audience as well, which I think is like really beautiful. Good choice, George. And one of the reasons that one of her aliases is Ashla, A-S-H-L-A, um, is because in her earliest development, that was her first name before they changed it to Ahsoka. Okay. Uh, George Lucas stated that he renamed her Ahsoka in an homage to an ancient Indian ep- emperor, Ashoka, which so Ash, the Ember is spelled A S H O K A. Ahsoka is spelled A A 
H S. Okay, so they flipped two of the letters. They flipped the second and third letters, the S and the H around. Okay, um, and that spelling is credited to Henry Gilroy, who was the screenwriter for cementing that as her name for all that we understand and then we know. Uh, Dave Filoni gets creator credit on her because he wrote her early childhood. So he wrote her first character Bible, uh, which is why in addition to George Lucas, because George Lucas came up with the initial concept, Dave Filoni is credited as a creator, uh, which is a very normal thing that happens when you're world building on a television show, Star Wars, Star Trek, Game of Thrones, anything like that. Um, And he described her as having, quote, the right stuff, unquote, to be removed from her hometown in order to um, become a Jedi and train and become a Padawan. And he has stated that he is very protective of her character and that she means a lot to him. Hmm. She is designed to give Anakin responsibility. Uh, which is meant to put him in a role where he will become cautious and responsible as a foil to him breaking bad towards the end as his relationship with Obi-Wan splinters a little bit. Um, And their relationship is seen as the essential story arc across um, both the film and the ongoing Clone Wars television animated series. Uh, Yes, because without Ahsoka, just in terms of a writing and story Mm -hmm. standpoint, Anakin has nothing to do. Except just wait to turn evil, which we exactly. see him do in I'm, a movie. I'm going to twiddle my thumb and, yeah. wait, and wait till I murder some children, whereas that's not interesting to watch. Whereas if we if we grapple him with a sort of redemption arc, you can sort of almost fool the audience into thinking, oh, well, maybe he won't become Darth Vader. Yes. Maybe Ahsoka will save him. Yes. So it was an excellent writing choice, Dave Filoni and George Lucas. So I have some really interesting quotes and perspectives from Dave Filoni reflecting back on the initial development of Ahsoka that I would like to share with everyone. And then I promise we'll get into the character history. I just think this stuff is really interesting. And I am. Let's call Dave Filoni on the phone. Let's get him on this. I would. I would love to. I would too. If anyone knows him, give him a call for us. Do it. Um, I'm also trusting that a lot of people know the basics of the Star Wars world uh, as we go into this lesson. Yes. So Dave Filoni said that when he started working on Ahsoka, he had, quote, zero perspective, unquote, on what it was like to be a 14-year-old girl because she's 14 when we met. So instead, he tried to focus more on her as a Jedi and coming at it from that perspective versus being an adolescent female. Got it. Um, And when the movie first came out... She is supposed to be 14 when we first meet her? When we first meet her, yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, When the movie first came out, people kept describing her as annoying, and Ashley Eckstein, who provides the primary voice for Ahsoka, kept saying... Please be patient. She will grow. She will change. And and if you actually look at a lot of Ashley Eckstein's early interviews from that time period, she handles it with so much grace, mm-hmm. considering like a, a less strong person would have walked away from that type of critic. We've seen people leave genre roles because they've been criticized before. Mm-hmm. And because she stuck with it and because the writing was there, Ahsoka has wound up being as beautiful and important as she is. Um, Dave Filoni also states that he, quote, always has a story in mind, end quote, for anything to do with Ahsoka. And for him, the most important thing was to understand what the final confrontation between Ahsoka and Vader was going to be. He said that he has known what it's going to be since he first uh, co-created her, although at times there have been different iterations and different endings of it. Uh, People who've watched all of the Clone Wars do know that Vader and Ahsoka do cross paths. You mean Star Wars Rebels, excuse me. Uh, you're right. You're absolutely right. Yeah. Um, they do cross paths uh, more than once. Mm-hmm. Uh, he said that in one of his versions, he had Vader kill Ahsoka just as he slashes open his helmet to reveal his scarred face, which honestly, I always assumed... Ahsoka would die. As, that Vader would kill Ahsoka because in I kind of still hold this, and, and your canon is what you make of it, which is what's beautiful. I, I don't think she can be alive. <laughs> You and I have talked about <laughs> yeah. this. You and I fall on the Jedi, especially in terms of the original trilogy, in the same way that I fall on the John Byrne Kryptonian reboot for Superman, that when John Byrne took over Superman, there were 50,000 survivors of the destruction of Krypton. Yeah. And it made Superman less unique. So John Byrne said, Superman is the only survivor. Yeah. Nobody else made it. Yeah. And, and he refused. If, if, if a Kryptonian showed up, they were from another universe or they were a shapeshifter or they were lying. And you and I kind of fall on the only Jedis that should be alive by the end of the original trilogy is Luke. Yeah. Because Yoda and Darth Vader 
and Kenobi, and Kenobi all died off. And yeah. there should be no other Jedi's. Which is not saying there aren't other Force sensitive people, just no yeah. other Jedi. Well, and as we're gonna, we're going to get to it, Ahsoka sort of fits into that as a not Jedi. I mean, you and, can say whatever you want. If Luke is a Jedi, she's a Jedi. She's a Jedi. She's a Jedi. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. I, I would put Kanan's um, arc under that as well. If you'd like a Kanan Jarrus episode, please request it. We would be happy to teach it. So there was only one point in the character development um, that Dave Filoni and George Lucas disagreed with. Um, oh, I'm very curious about this. So we'll we'll get to it a little bit when we talk about the shows. But in Clone Wars, Ahsoka basically rage quits being a Jedi. Spoilers. No, it's fine. Um, and George Lucas said that he agreed with that choice and thought that she should remain expelled and never go back. And then eventually that she should um, survive Order 66 and then command and lead the Republic's clone army to murder um, the Jedi. Ahsoka should? Yes. And Dave Filoni was like, I don't freaking think so. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he was—he wanted her to have a similar turn so, to Anakin. So she, he, his original idea was that Ahsoka should sort of be Darth Vader's evil apprentice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I'll tell you. I'll say this. I I agree with Dave Filoni. I disagree with that. But I will also say there are these Star Wars alternate comics called mm-hmm. Infinities. Yeah, yeah, and Marvel. We should see. You should make a comic book called Ahsoka Tano, Apprentice of the Sith, and show us that storyline. Oh, man. That would be such a... I can just see the cover right now. It's Ahsoka holding two red lightsabers. Awesome. Oh, that would be so cool. I'd read the hell out of that comic book. Um, also, if you're familiar with Ahsoka's image or not, I pause and look at the art that we uh, put up. I just wanted to add this note. Um her appearance is inspired by the lead character in Princess Mononoke by San. And if you know Princess Mononoke, she has this white wolf headdress and Ahsoka has these white and blue tondrils um, that are obviously part of- Is that of- what you call them officially? Tond- well, tondrils? I've heard them called both tondrils and montrails. I've heard them called montrails um, more. I don't I, know, I don't know which I don't is right. know the difference really. Well, also she's kind of an alien, so is either- she's not kind of she is an alien. Well, yes, but is, is and she's also a fictional character, so yeah. is either one of those correct or right when the uh, character probably, is fictional? Probably not. Yeah, <laughs> I could call she them gross on the top of her head. I could call them baloopa loops, and that would be correct. Um, but so she her design is inspired by San, and a lot of her poses and movements are based on uh, samurai training moves. And yes. that's why she holds the blades backwards. And her armor was also inspired by samurai armor. So I, I there we love, go. I love that as the clone wars moved on, mm-hmm. they started doing more and more, um, body capture to like motion think, capture, motion capture yeah, excuse me, to yeah, actually yeah. have a martial artist fight the fights. Because one of the greatest things, and we'll, I assume we're going to talk about this is the last Ahsoka fight that we see chronologically I mean, chronologically in our present day, yeah, was they they got Ray Park as Darth Maul, the original Darth Maul. Yeah, to, and that's to, the one that um to mocap. Uh, it. Hang on, I have her name higher in my notes. Uh, that's the one that Lauren Mary Kim did the mocap work for. Cool. Uh, and mocap really helps, so that's why that's why we're bringing it up. All right, so let's talk a little bit about what she gets up to in each and every single one of her appearances. Um, I'm actually going to start with one of the more recent ones because there's so little to say about it, and then we're gonna, just going to go back in the character history. Um, the only place that she shows up in the live action movies is she is Ahsoka Tano voiced by Ashley Eckstein, the original voice actor. She does make a cameo in the rise of Skywalker. Uh, Ray hears her at some point. Oh yes, you are correct. Um, I just wanted to mention that right off the top because I'm literally never going to bring it up again. But I do think it's cool that Ashley Eckstein, the person who created this role, who went through all the bumps and bruises of doing it, um, that she actually got to be in one of the movies. I think that's really, really lovely. And Freddie Prinze Jr. as Kanan is in that as well. Uh, And really, really beautiful. Yeah. Um, And she actually credits Matt Lanter, who's Anakin, for helping her find Ahsoka's voice and helping her through the early development of that character. And I think that's really lovely because I think uh, he does a really wonderful voice as uh, Anakin. What's his name again, Matt? Matt Lanter. I know he recently popped up, or he was in season one of The Mandalorian. He was the guard of the Republican prison that they killed. Uh, I think he's a great Anakin voice. And also we should shout out James Arnold. Taylor, mm-hmm. uh, um, acquaintance and friend of the show. Yes. Um, 
He does. I think he's an amazing Obi Wan. He's an amazing Jason's favorite character. Yes. <laughs> Please request an Obi Wan episode. Oh God. It'll be a million years long. So let's talk about uh, the Clone Wars, the 2008 animated movie. Yep. Jason, did you see this in theaters? No. No. I could have thought you would have. I considered it, uh-huh. and I will tell you why. Because at the time. When this movie, this movie kind of got stealth released because uh-huh. they weren't. I, it, I believe it was developed as a, te- a straight to TV movie and then they whacked it in the theaters last minute. Very similar to what the animated series does. And I remember reading about this movie because this was when Ain't It Cool was a big thing. Uh-huh, uh-huh, and uh-huh. Ain't It Cool back in the day was like the number one uh, dominant. Nerd news source, n- yeah. Nerd Rumor mill, site, yeah. whatever, yeah. And they talked about it too because, again, this is pre-Star Wars being sold to Disney we assumed episode three, the was prequel, be it. was the last Star Wars movie. And when this came up and, and they announced that they were going to release it in theaters, Ain't It Cool went crazy on it because there was this idea of this might be the last Star Wars movie in theaters. And so because of that, I considered it. Mm-hmm. But then it started getting really bad reviews. And that's what made me be like, no. I actually didn't see this. I think I had seen Clone Wars season one and two uh-huh. before I finally got a chance to see the movie and then I watched the movie and I was like oh boy I remember the movie being on TV constantly oh really okay constantly uh, you didn't see it in theaters did you no okay. I have never seen it oh that's right because the, the you didn't watch Clone Wars till 2012 yeah yeah, My yeah. and I will say that I've seen some clips and they don't appeal to me the only cool thing in the movie is that there's a baby Jabba the Hutt. oh yeah we're gonna talk about that the baby <laughs> hut is super cute I have an action figure of yep. it action figure spotlight I oh, don't wait, know which wait. one that is wait it, it, uh, uh, sky guy <laughs> Action figure spotlight. I don't know which action figure it is, but I have a teeny tiny, like uh, three and three quarters. In Ahsoka, Ahsoka with a tiny little hut. Yeah, and in and, and the backpack. So I will share a picture of it and I'll share a link where people can get one if they want it. They're very easy to find. So the Clone Wars film debuted on August 15th, 2008. Uh, my brother's birthday. Shout out to him, I guess. Um, the only reason I bring up that it came out in August of 2008 is because Star Wars The Clone Wars TV series debuted on October 2008. So the movie pretty much only existed to push to this. It was probably it is, it the original a, pilot. It is a pilot. Yeah. You can, because it because Ahsoka meets Anakin in the movie. Yes, yeah, she becomes, she's assigned to him as Padawan. Yep. She's 14 years old. Yoda's like, you need a greater sense of responsibility. Take on this actual yep. human being. And, a, and, a bit and of, Anakin is not happy about no, it. No, yes. And a, and a big plot line of the movie is Anakin figuring out how am I going to get rid of this kid because I don't want a Padawan. Yes. And then by the end of the movie, he decides to keep her. Uh, their relationship is often described as playfully contentious. Uh, Anakin calls her Snips. <sighs> Ahsoka calls him Sky Guy. Oh, that Sky was guy. the horrible joke of the intro. <sighs> they drop that pretty quickly. We do get Thank the Metaclorians. <laughs> we do get Snips reprise a couple times. It shows up, but Fly Guy goes away. Uh, Sky or Guy. Sky Guy. Because Skywalker. Um, it's terrible. Basically, the only thing that Ahsoka actually gets up to, besides being a growth point for Anakin, um, is they go on a quote unquote dangerous mission together. Um, and her job is to help him rescue Jabba the Hutt's infant son, this baby. Spice worm, basically, for all intents and purposes. I don't purposes. know if it's specifically Jabba the Hutt. I think it's a different hut. Well, uh, StarWars.com thinks okay. it's Jabba the Hutt's infant son. Well, then I'll believe, <laughs> uh, I, I will believe, I will believe you. Um, I will say that that movie also breaks, uh, welcome to the, the, the Please. geek history lesson on the huts. There is a hut. Star Wars crosses its own continuity and disrespects it. What? No. No, that's not what I'm saying at all. <laughs> Sorry. Um, there was a hut in that movie that speaks English. Oh, really? Yes. I think they're called like Morbo. The, not Morbo the Hut, but they have a name like that. And Morbo the Hut. I wish it was Morbo I the Hut. I will destroy you. Um, <laughs> there is a hut in that movie. Who speaks English. Who speaks English. And I remember that breaking my brain well, to be like, wow. Well, they probably said, look, most of our audience is going to be Anglophones. Yeah. They're little kids. We don't want to put subtitles. Now, How dare we have these children read? I think you see Jabba in that movie, and Jabba still speaks the Hoka Tiba Solo. Yes, of Whereas course. Whereas this other person is like, oh, hello. He's like this. It kind of like sounds like Paul Lind. 
Paul Lynn. Yeah, the person kind of sounds like Paul Lynn. <laughs> okay. Although I think it's a woman. <laughs> Very loud and uh, yeah. flamboyant. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Well, welcome to our hut corner. Hut corner. Paul Lind corner. Okay. I'll see if I can find this person. So now we're going to talk about the Clone Wars, which um, at first blush goes from 2008 to 2020, but that's not wholly um, true. Uh, fun fact, Ahsoka is only credited as a lead character for six out of the seven series of Clone Wars. She was a recurring character, um, a supporting character in the first season. So. She's basically not in the last two seasons almost. Um, but she's credited as a lead character, which is a pay, it's basically a pay grade for the actor. Zero the Hut. Zero the Hut. Z-I-R-O. I'm going to go with Zyro. I'm pretty certain they say Zero the Hut. Um, Ahsoka is a Padawan commander in the 501st Legion of the Grand Army of the Republic. And while she serves there, she is apprenticing under Anakin Skywalker to become a Jedi Knight. You want to hear some Zero Jedi the Hutt? Master. Absolutely. All right. I don't know what this clip is. I'm going to play Let's, it. Yep. It just says Zero. Don't and, worry. There and, won't be swears in and it. And the Hut Council. Yeah, Here yeah, we yeah. go. Gentlemen, gentlemen, I see no need for resentment in light of this joyous occasion of my freedom. Chuba Gispa Montacur Gispa. Of course I do appreciate They sound the like Zero the there Hut sounds like the the sounds like the gay master of ceremonies at Mardi Gras. Yeah, weirdly, like I said, like kind of Paul Lindis. Kind of southerny, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But I'm there just, you go, that's zero. Uh, great. And I showed Ashley the clip so he could see a hut speaking with English. <laughs> Thank you. I'm going to assume that he was wearing his universal train. I'm also assuming a slug's gender. Uh, was wearing a universal translator and maybe Jabba. Yeah, sure. Was it? That's a Star Trek thing. Um, over the course of the Clone Wars, Anakin and Ahsoka do develop a mutual fondness, taking increasing risks to save one another and help one another with their struggles. Although Ahsoka at times does express concern over Anakin's darker tendencies, such as his willingness to torture prisoners. Um, even at a time when she goes missing and he's torturing them to try and find out more information about where she is being held. Um, she also develops a close friendship with Captain Rex. Jason, who's Captain Rex? Captain Rex is a clone of the Republic Army. Yes. Voiced by D. Bradley Baker. Yes. So, sort of sounding like a Kiwi. Yes, doing a, doing a light Kiwi. Does it sound like a Tamura Morrison? Yes. Uh, icon, he always kind of is up here. Icon Tamura Morrison. Yes. Uh, co-star of Moana, Tamura Morrison. Yes. Uh, D. Bradley Baker actually is a very big voice actor, and he's great. He's an excellent actor. Yes. Are, are, I was like, are people not familiar with D. Bradley Baker? Uh, uh, yes. Some people I was are. like, is he not a famous voice actor? Uh, definitely... I would consider him famous, but so you'd, would I. you'd be surprised. But he voices every single clone. And Captain Rex uh, is the clone trooper that is her captain of her like squad. And he has blue stripes and a nice little skirt. And he, he uses two pistols. Yeah. he. I would say he's probably the most prominent of the clone troopers um, in the television show universe. Oh, actually, because he's not, um, uh, my, my apologies, he's not Ahsoka's commander. He's Anakin's commander. Well, he would still, I guess, technically be Ahsoka. He becomes she's beneath, Ahsoka's commander. Uh, yeah, yeah, and then eventually Ahsoka becomes and he's, his commander. And he's a contemporary to... Um, Commander Cody, yes. who is Obi-Wan Kenobi's uh, general. Yes, very true. We have a Rex action figure, don't we? We do. We have Rex and Cody. Can we have an action figure spotlight? Of, uh, uh, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> action figure spotlight. Thank you. Action figure spotlight. Um, I've always thought about pitching you the idea of doing a clone trooper, GHL, but that would be deeply, deeply complicated. During the final arc... Of season five of Star Wars The Clone Wars, Ahsoka starts to get into a lot of trouble and make her formal break from the Jedi Order and as it is structured when we meet her. She's framed and imprisoned for a deadly explosion and a bunch of resulting murder. Although she is eventually exonerated, she becomes disillusioned with the Jedi Council and the Jedi Order for not backing her, for not believing her, and for investigating her in the first place. I would say that I, I soft understand and agree with why she falls out of love with them, but due process is due process. Um, at the end of the season, in the season finale, you see her running away on Coruscant. It's really cool. I actually really love that sort of chase out of the Jedi Temple. But she's technically, so they kick her out. Yeah. And then they offer her to come back in. Because she's exonerated. Exactly. Yes. And she says no. Yeah. She's like, so, screw you guys. I'm going home. Just for everybody out there, officially, 
She's not a Jedi. Yes, that's but correct. She's basically a Jedi. I mean, she uses the lightsaber. She uses the Force. In, in order to make it as she has several many battle ones, but she never gets branded as a Jedi. Yeah, no, knight. she never like made the black belt. Yeah, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think it's it's just easy to think of her as having the power set skills and training of a Jedi knight well, at the very least. We were talking about that earlier about only the there should be no Jedi's around when Luke is around, and I kind of think that's how they get around it is because technically, I think if you were to ask Dave Filoni, Dave Filoni would be like, Ahsoka's not a Jedi. That's true. Um, As- um, um, I was going to say Ahsoka would also. Dave Filoni um, Speak of the devil. said that one of the initial reasons that he had Ahsoka escape was because he was also going to have Rex escape Order 66 so that way um, he could explain how both she and Rex exist in events after Revenge of the Sith. Cool. So the only reason for her getting kicked out is in case in the future, which has actually happened now because we are in the future from when this was in development. Welcome, they everybody. Wanted to, you're welcome. They wanted to bring Ahsoka into a movie, a TV show, a comic book, a, a novel, all of which have happened. Hey, so Dave Filoni. So shout out to Dave Filoni for being so forward thinking. Dave Filoni, he understands how character royalties work. Well done. Yes, he does. I mean, how else do you think the man ex- uh, can pay for so many magnificent cowboy hats? You know, a good cowboy hat is quite pricey. I know. Cowboy boots are also very pricey. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Giddy up. Oh, boy. <laughs> uh, Anakin is stated to be greatly affected by Ahsoka being kicked out of the Jedi Order and her framing. And that's also used as uh, impetus for his turn away from... Uh, the Jedi and into the darkness. Yeah, the there, dark there is actually a cut scene um, from Star Wars Revenge of the Sith where Anakin mentions Ahsoka Tano. And most of the scene, he mentions her once. Mm-hmm. And then he starts talking about how he just still hates sand. Padme's just like, would you shut up? <laughs> shut up. Poor Padme. She you're, was always too good for you. You're Anakin. a desert boy. I understand. This is all a joke here, buddy. Yeah. Could you imagine, though? It would be so great. I'm tired of the sand, man. <laughs> um, we're going to jump forward again. But before I do, I just want to, I put a little note here. I know there's a bunch of people saying, you skipped right to season five. Why did you skip right to season five? Ashley, yes, Jason. you skipped right to season five. I did, yes. Why did you skip right to season five of the Clone Wars? Because Clone Wars and Star Wars colon Rebels suffer from the same adjustment period that Avatar The Last Airbender does. Uh, and, You're going to have to and explain that a little I will. And, and Arrow season one and Flash season one. It takes most of the first season... For them to figure out what they're doing, which is absolutely fair. Most television shows take their first year to figure out what the, not everything comes out the womb like Watchmen, just perfectly quaffed. That is correct. You know what I mean? And then I feel like it takes until about the fifth season for them to realize they have a much more mature audience. I don't know what channel this aired on in America, but... Uh, I believe it was Cartoon Network. There you go. In Canada, it aired on uh, a network called Teletoon. Teletoon is a kid's network. And so the first five, the first four seasons, if you go back and watch them, if you've never watched them before, check them out on Disney+, Plus, whatever, um, they're definitely geared toward a younger audience, which is totally fine, but it means that they tend to be more episodic. There tends to be less character development, less plot, less story going on. Um, There's about four or five episodes a season that you could probably skip because they're either just about the droids or they're just about the younglings. I actually really like the Ahsoka and the younglings episode, but you watch it and you're like, this is for kids. It's in season five where they realize that their audience is a little bit older, a little bit more mature, and they start doing more sophisticated things. This is also the first time that Ahsoka steps out of Anakin's shadow yep. in a meaningful way. So and then that's season why season six is the deleted the, episodes. It only went to DVD until they put it on Disney Plus. Yes, and, and Ahsoka's in none of it. And Ahsoka's in none of those. So seasons. we're gonna skip to season seven. And then season seven was the one that they made literally last year. Yes, because of Disney Plus. Yes. So I just wanted to address that in case we'd gotten this far and people were not quite certain what happened. So in season seven, which is the one that came out literally last year. That so they, That they made five years after the other ones. Yes. Yeah. I, uh, or so, may, may, might have even been more than that. Um, I'm going to call, I believe it ended in 2014. So that would be six years. Yeah. Six so years it would later. have been in development earlier than that, but well, it aired six years Roughly apart. five years later. Yeah. Um, I'm going to put a slight spoiler warning if you haven't seen it, because this is relatively new, but it's not currently airing. So we're going to talk hold on, about hold it. Hold on. 
Spoiler alert. Thank you so much. Um, Ahsoka is the focus of two out of the three story arcs that we see throughout the season, so she's fairly prominent um, throughout. In the second arc, which kind of takes place uh, during, in, and around the time of Revenge of the Sith, depending on how good you are with your Star Wars timeline, um, she does briefly reunite with Anakin, which is really nice, um, because um, they both wind up acting as advisor to Rex, who is promoted to commander by this time in the 300, 332nd company, which is different than the 501st Legion. They've split off. They've kind of become their own autonomous yeah, cause, body. Yeah, because Rex was under Cody's command. Yes, he was. And yes. then they have a little falling out, and yep. then they have a little coming yeah, back together. Yeah, season seven takes place just before Revenge of the Sith, during I, Revenge of the Sith, yes. and after Revenge of the yes. Sith. Yes, so I, that's why I'm just sort of yeah. blanketing it with in and around. <laughs> yeah. For our more general Star Wars fans, don't get me wrong, I'm right there with you. Episode three, nerds. Yes, there we go. And this all happens during what is called the Siege of Mandalore. Because um, they are... Mandalore is under the command of Darth Maul, who has come back for his 144th time mm-hmm. uh, in this universe. Uh, shout out to Sam Witwer. You're a great Darth Maul. He is. We like you a lot. But the coolest thing about Darth Maul coming back is uh, he's an all-time great design. And two, the spider legs are scary AF. And well, then well, he doesn't in this have season, the spider, he spider legs, legs but, yes. but he does have robot legs. And his robot legs are still really scary. So Magic legs, Darth Maul. Magic legs. Forrest Gump. Oh, I was like, oh, I thought, I was like, are you doing Magic Alex? No, because remember, there's a scene in Forrest Gump where he sees Lieutenant Dan and he goes, Magic Lags. So, Darth Maul, Magic Lags. Okay, thank you. Magic Lags, Darth Maul, Magic Lags. (laughs) Uh, And Ahsoka kind of then spends the rest of her time in the show fighting Darth Maul, trying to defeat Darth Maul. Um, He makes the reveal to her um, that Darth Sidious is trying to go after Anakin. Unfortunately, because the movies are set in stone, uh, Ahsoka can't really do anything to help about that. Although I really would have loved to see them grapple with that, but that's just me editorializing Mm -hmm. um, a little bit. She's also like several light years away too oh yeah i mean yes they're not even on the same planet at this point um ahsoka and darth maul have an amazing mocap fight um on top of a bunch of uh scaffolding i guess Uh, they're up in the girders yeah on top of a weird building um ahsoka does defeat and capture maul because it still is a kid's show and so like the good guys have to win Mm -hmm. and she is got them all tied up and she's like ready to take him back to coruscant and then the forest tells her that something is happening to anakin can um and that she has to go and help him uh what it's actually signaling this happens at the same time that anakin fully gives over to the dark side and he has just helped to kill mace windu so again if you're more more familiar that's when this happens immediately after this order 66 is issued we've referenced this twice jason what's order 66 order 66 is where darth sidious me the emperor Mm -hmm, mm mm-hmm See, I, I put a little code inside all these clones. Mm-hmm. And when I flip the switch, they go crazy and they kill the Jedi. Yes. Mm. So Order 66 is issued and Ahsoka is standing in a bunch of clone troopers, uh, including Commander Rex. They all turn on her. She is able to remove Rex's chip, uh, which is controlling his brain. So she doesn't wind up overtaking Maul at this point. Her and Rex make a heroic escape. Um in a Star Destroyer, which crashes on a moon, they survive, but they bury all of the dead clone troopers who died along with them, and then they part ways. And you see um, the light, Ahsoka's uh, two lightsabers. She has two white lightsabers, which she wields with backhanded grips. She leaves them in the sand, and then you get a really beautiful shot at the end of Darth Vader coming to his last sense location for her. To find her. He assumes that his Padawan. We also uh, should mention dead. it's really cool because all the clone troopers under her command paint themselves in her design. It's amazing. And they, they made, made an action figure. I was going to say, an action figure spotlight. Hold on. <laughs> action figure. Action figure spotlight. There you go. They made a dope clone trooper army where they have Ahsoka's colors. So, they, yes, they paint the markings. Um of a Togruta in the blue and the orange um, on their helmets, which it is looks really great. Real, it looks really good. Because in the in this seventh season, this is when her and Rex are basically, she's commanding Rex, but they're, for all intents and purposes, sharing command 
over his little legion. Well, because technically Ahsoka can't be in charge because he's not a Jedi, and yeah. so they sort of loosey goosey. But there, are, but he's like, you'll always be a Jedi to me. Exactly. Rex is kind of like, I'll follow. I your do lead. a killer Kiwi accent. You clearly. do. <laughs> Hello, Rex. I'm sorry to all our Kiwi listeners. Do you have a guest house? We need places to travel. We've been stuck inside a long hey, time. Hey, Rex. Yeah. <laughs> How you doing, Rex? Get in the car. Wait, you'd be Rex too. Rex too. Well, because you're a clone and I'm a clone. Oh no, I want to be. I see. I'm doing an impression I of Dee Bradley fives. Baker's impression of Toon Miller and Morrison, and uh, you're doing straight up Kiwi. I'm just trying to sound like Britt McKenzie. <laughs> <laughs> this is a bad impression. It's so bad. I know because I'm always I always do Murray from Fight of the Concourse when I'm doing Kiwi, and it's like Britt. <laughs> Band meeting. Clown meeting. <laughs> Clown meeting. <laughs> Can you imagine? Rex. Just a legion. Present. Uh, Rex. Present. Rex. <laughs> present. <laughs> Can you imagine? Just the whole Four legion. Four hours later. Rex. <laughs> present. A whole legion of clone troopers all just voiced by Murray. Yep. Uh, shout out to Reese Darby. You're an icon and we love you. He's also, uh, he's great in Voltron. We love him there too. Sure. Yeah, they even draw the character to look like him, which is very funny. All right. Um, and that is where I think we're going to leave the Clone Wars, and now we're going to bippity bop Finally, what a long war. It's never ending. Well, um, they are the Star Wars, more, meaning more than one. I mean, I guess. I guess. So in 2014, that's when the Netflix season of, um, Re- of Rebels, of Clone Wars wrapped up, and then that is when Rebels began. Right. I don't know. You're teaching the lesson. You tell me. I was hoping you would just say right. Uh, It is set 14 years after the Clone Wars precludes. Um, I don't know if that's 14 years after season six or season six. Yes. Or I don't know if that's 14 years after season seven because all of Rebels happened and then they added another season to the end of Clone Wars. So give or take 15 years after Clone Wars is when Rebels is set. In the fictional history of the Star Wars universe, I believe you're you're going for 15 years post Revenge of the Sith. Uh, Yes. That's what you're going for. Um, but I was I was only researching in relation to the shows, so maybe it's fourteen years. After well, the, the end of the Clone season. Wars is the end of Rendezvous. It'd so be the exact. Okay, same great. Time. Then so fifteen years. Yep. Fabulous, fabulous, fabulous. So uh, there's a character with a code name Fulcrum who's kind of feeding uh, Ezra and uh, Kanan and their crew, which is the new characters who lead Rebels. Um, information for a little while. Information. And they are aboard a ship called the Ghost, so we're going to probably call them the Ghost Crew a lot. Um, they give them intelligence, they give them supplies, they help point them in the right direction, which is great, because like I mentioned with the Clone Wars, Rebels takes about ten entire episodes to get really, really good. Yep. Uh, and Ahsoka is a big part of that. In the season finale of season one, which is also slash a movie, in the way that the pilot of the Clone Wars is also slash a movie, um... We finally get to see Ahsoka, and she is disguising her appearance. She has an altered voice, uh, but that's when we first see her. That's when she's the hooded hologram when she first shows up, which is like a, lo- a long-standing Star Wars trope of meeting heroes or villains wearing hoods in those blue uh, flickering holograms. She becomes a recurring character in the second season, going back to her OG status as uh, not a full-time cast member, and she's leading the ghost crew hanging out with them, doing all that cool stuff. She assumes that Anakin has died, like most of the other Jedi at the end of the Clone Wars, in a really, really interesting way, uh, mirroring the fact that Darth Vader thinks that she also passed away. And during this movie that kind of bridges the first and the second season, we introduce Darth Vader to the show's continuity, and it's not until Ahsoka comes face-to-face with him that she is able to recognize she's the first of the good guys to realize that Darth Vader is, at, I mean, maybe Obi-Wan, uh, since he's actually there for it, to realize that he is Anakin Skywalker, but she can only sense it under, quote, a layer of hate, end we should, quote. We should mention here that that does not happen in that opening movie. That is the that is over the course of yes. the second season. She doesn't realize that it's Anakin until no, they first the face very each other far in. The, in. They, they first encounter each other. They see each other yes. in the now, movie. I like that a lot because I love the idea that it assumes, which I think is correct, mm-hmm. That people in the Star Wars universe don't know that Anakin Skywalker is Darth Vader. You literally can't. 
Yeah. Or the whole but I kind love of that because because there, the, the well, there are there are up. certain things that treat it like that is common knowledge. Yeah, yeah. And then I lo- I because I believe it's this. I believe that people are just like, who's this Darth Vader guy that just showed up? I mean, and I and would Anakin absolutely must have died in Order sixty six. Yes, I would absolutely believe like Ahsoka loves Anakin, not in a romantic yeah. way. Let me make that very clear. But I believe Ahsoka loves him, and I believe that he means so much to her that she would keep this secret. Mm-hmm. I have no issue believing that whatsoever. And the same thing with. Like, Obi-Wan knows he literally can't tell anyone what happened. Yeah. Um, And so, like Jason mentioned, she realizes that he's Anakin later in the second season and at the same time has a vision of Anakin where he shows up to her and he blames her for allowing him to fall to the dark side. How like a man blaming her for something she had absolutely no part of. And in the second season finale, she finally duels with Darth Vader inside um, what is called a Sith temple on Malachor Five? It literally looks like a Sith, a giant Sith holocron. It's a pyramid opens up, and then they like go inside, and then they fight. Um, the ghost crew flies away. You see the temple crumbling around them, and all that we see as the audience is you do see Darth Vader emerging from the temple uninjured, and then we see this green and white owl. The green and white owl in Rebels kind of becomes a symbol of Ahsoka. It's kind of her familiar, if you're used to that term, with like fictional witches. We've seen it throughout uh, Rebels before this as well. It is described as uh, an avatar of the daughter of Mortis, um, and it flies back, and it eventually sees Ahsoka leaving as well. So... um, Dave Filoni stated that they were never going to kill her at the end of that fight, that it was always designed to be ambiguous and a bit open-ended. And Ashley Eckstein has a bunch of interviews where she goes, I hope she's still alive because they probably... Well, are we going to get to the con- what confirmed. actually happens there? Yes. Okay, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, then... In season four, so we go, we go another two, another whole season. Oh, it was break basically a Ahsoka. whole year later, yeah. Yeah, which is the same thing that mm-hmm. we did. Like she's not in season six of the Clone Wars at all. So she's not in season three, three um, of Rebels at all. Um, in the episode "A World Between Worlds," we finally learn that Ahsoka is not dead after all. Um, Ezra has a vision uh, in the Jedi Temple on Lothal, and he is guided by Ahsoka, and she helps him in his vision. And we should explain that Ezra is the Jedi Padawan of the time of He's, that of that show. Yes, he is the lead of the show. He kind of looks like Aladdin mm-hmm. with longer hair. He's kind of the Luke Skywalker of that show. Yeah, uh, yeah. he literally talks to space whales at one point. Mm-hmm. So it's pretty it's pretty cool. Um, Ahsoka eventually reveals herself in real life. She hangs out with the ghost crew a little bit more. Um, and then when Palpatine emerges as the threat toward the end of Rebels, Ahsoka is a key part in helping Ezra escape. Um, from his pursuit and she vows uh, as she leaves him behind that she will find Ezra and the crew again. Let me, let's talk about this. Yeah. Do you like that solution for Ahsoka surviving that fight? I think she should have died. I agree. I also think that I think this would be my prediction that the writers and Dave Filoni came up with this idea of this time travel world. Because what it is, it's it, like Ezra walks into this room, he sees these portals, yes. and you can see various points of time. This and, is, in my opinion, the most sci-fi nonsense you yeah. ever get out of Star Wars. And it's an excellent episode. And it is a great episode. But I think their intention was that Ahsoka either escaped off camera or died. Yes. and then Which when would they, make sense because he's on a spiritual plane or an astral plane. And then plane. when they came up with this episode, mm-hmm. they came up with the idea that fans will love it if we save Ahsoka. See, when I first saw this, I assumed she was dead. Me too. I assumed this was a version of a Force ghost, mm-hmm. which totally is totally fine for me. Like I said, I don't really think there's a way, particularly by this point, we had confirmation that she knew who Vader was, you're not telling me that she wouldn't have gone to look for the twins? That well, she couldn't have found Kenobi? Who who would have said that she would even know about the twins? But but I believe I mean she knows about Padme. But she doesn't know that Padme gave birth. She knows Padme was pregnant. Sure, but only two people know that or three people know that Padme gave birth and that's Kenobi, Yoda and uh Antilles. Uh no no no, and Antilles, uh Bail Organa. Yes, yeah, yeah. So I don't know that she would know about the babies or know where the babies even survived, but she would know 
hey, Kenobi and Yoda are out there somewhere. Well, or would she go looking for Padme to see if she was still alive? Possibly, yeah. You know, like, like I have questions. Yeah. And a really easy way, and again, because she's not in the movies because she wasn't invented yet, so we mm-hmm. can't backpedal that much. We but can't really, retcon her into the movies. Exactly. Yeah. A really easy way to solve that is to kill her. Yeah. Um, and you make her sacrifice for Anakin, who even though Anakin is a bad guy, we still have a lot of empathy for because of the way the Star Wars movies have played out over mm-hmm. the years. All right. Um, now I want to jump forward again to the Mandalorian. Now, at the time of this recording, the Mandalorian season two just happened. Yes. So we're going to talk very vaguely about it. We are? Uh, we are. That's going to be really hard. And then if Jason wants to chime in, he can chime in. Okay. I think we'd be pretty vague because uh, nothing happens in that episode. Uh, yes and no. Yeah. Um, it's going to be hard to talk vague about this, I just, but okay. I just Good wanna, luck. I just want to talk about it um, because um, the first thing that we ever knew about The Mandalorian and the casting in The Mandalorian is that in like 2016 or 2017, uh, Rosario Dawson kind of started this campaign wanting to play Ahsoka Tano. And like Brie Larson, who was campaigning to play Captain Marvel and then eventually was cast as Captain Marvel. And people made fan art. Absolutely. Um, it started as a campaign. Maybe it started as an overture from her people to Disney's people. She was on a Marvel show. You know, like she was definitely had a foot in the door. From what I understood, the campaign started. Dave Filoni saw it. Dave Filoni knows Rosario Dawson and asked. Ah, interesting. That's what I heard in an interview post her appearance in The Mandalorian. So The Mandalorian debuted in 2019. Mm -hmm. So I just want to state that years before The Mandalorian, a few years before The Mandalorian, uh, she was campaigning to play Ahsoka. It wasn't just when The Mandalorian started. Um, In March of 2020, that was when the first announcement came out that Rosario Dawson would be appearing in the second season of The Mandalorian. And it wasn't until um, a few weeks later that it was confirmed who she was going to be playing and that it was Ahsoka Tano. There's a ton of controversy around that. Um, fans are still a little bit split because I know a lot of people wanted Ashley Eckstein, who has acted in live action before, to take on the role. Um, and then the other question was, is Rosario just going to be the voice, uh, the body of it, and is Ashley Eckstein going to be the voice, which is an insane they question. They would have never done that. No, no. That would be way too much work. Star Wars shows are already too much work. They are. So that is that. And then the episode debuted in November of 2020. Um, Ahsoka appears in the fifth episode of the second season. She's looking for Grand Admiral Thrawn. That's pretty much all I'm going to say about it. Um, So I don't give away too much. Um, I also haven't seen the full episode. And I haven't seen the full season of The Mandalorian. She looks good. She looks good in live action, man. They you can a, tell they, it's a hat. They did a really... And it's not long enough. I, I don't but care. She looks, she it does look looks good. good. Um, what do you think about Ahsoka in live action? Because you're, you're the one who's seen it, so I'm just asking you to give me a take. I thought she looked she good. She looks good, yeah. I, the lightsabers know, look good. I actually think the white lightsabers really work in live action. They really do. And the Ahsoka design is just a really good design. Yeah. And that's why it translates very well. Uh, you know, Rosara Dawson is a... Is it, she's a good actor. She's a really good actress. Um, I don't know if she brought anything special to the role. That's fine. So, I mean, she didn't wow me as Ahsoka. Yeah. Um, I don't know if anybody would have wowed me as Ahsoka. It's tough, right? It is tough when you have a beloved character appearing for the first time. Right? Yeah. Uh, and then last year, at the end of last year, we knew that there was an Ahsoka team in development. Or Ahsoka, Ahsoka show. What? An Ahsoka show. And, I'm I was sorry. like, what's an Ahsoka I was, team? I was looking at the word team okay. in my notes. <laughs> yeah, all right. Because um, it was it is being developed by the team of John, John Favreau. 12, 18. Rex. <laughs> Present. Rex. Present. Present. Rex. Present. Rex. Present. Rex. Present. Rex. Pre- no, it's, that's me. Oh, Present. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's being developed by John Favreau and Dave Filoni, who are, for all intents of porpoises, the uh, Mandalorian team. Porpoises? Porpoises, yeah. Yeah. That's a Greg Proop stroke. You're welcome. First idea in the clown meeting. First idea. Maybe fire more. <laughs> pew, 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 pew. Pew, 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 pew. Excellent. Thank you. Rick's. Meeting over. <laughs> <laughs> meeting adjourned. <laughs> 
Um, I do also want to give a special shout out to uh, Star Wars Ahsoka, which is the uh, YA print novel written by E.K. Johnson that came out in 2016. It's set between Clone Wars and Rebels. I will say in terms of actual plot, not a ton happens, but they do a lot of really cute stuff um, for the character in development. Uh, She has a crush on a girl, so I really like the implication that she's queer or that in the Star Wars universe because it is so multi-layered and there's different species that uh, sexuality and gender is not as big a deal. Um, And I just wanted to mention that because I think I know a lot of people were upset when we set aside the old continuity and we moved into the new continuity. But I do think um, I do think that the way. Disney, the entity, rolls out their books is very smart. That new and how Ahsoka they book is part to... of the new continuity, right? It is, yes. The only thing that got grandfathered in was the Clone Wars. Yes. Yeah. Because uh, I it was I think because it's so beloved. I think also because George gonna, is working on it. Yes, and because yeah. they were so heavily drawing on it, there was no way we were Are not you going, going to mention the final scene of Rebels? Uh, I was not going to. I was actually just going to wrap up. Okay, so if you want to shout that out so real quick, let's go for it. The final it. scene of Star Wars Rebels reveals Ahsoka mm-hmm. with no lightsabers, mm-hmm. a stat. Well, she could have lightsabers around her belt. We wouldn't know. And she's no, in but this, we, she does put them down. Yeah, so. she, she's in. Well, no, no. I'm saying in Rebels, we have no idea. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Because yes, yes, in yes, Mandalorian, yes. she has lightsabers. Yes. So <laughs> somewhere she gets lightsabers again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lightsabers aren't that hard. You just build them. Jedis do it all the time. Well, I will say in the Ahsoka book, that's where she rebuilds the lightsabers between the two shows. Okay. So well, there you go. in canon, she's technically built lightsabers four times now. She's a double lightsaber, so she could probably do it again. So at the end of Rebels, mm-hmm. you see Ahsoka kind of looking like a gray Jedi, if you are familiar yes. with that term, like a Jedi that's not Sith or or Jedi that's kind of in between. Like Tom Baker. And she is with another character who I will not reveal in case you want to watch Rebels. Yeah. And they decide that they are going to search for a person who I will not reveal. It has not been confirmed by Dave Filoni, and he has been asked. How that search goes. No, where that scene takes place. If the episode of The Mandalorian takes place before or after that, it is unclear. And he's being very cagey about it because I think he's going to decide what he thinks is best and then write it that way. So or maybe draw on that in the in her standalone series. The way how Rebels ends is Rebels kind of jumps through time and you see events past. Yes. Return of the Jedi. But they don't clock them in time. So that scene could be. 10 years after her appearance in The Mandalorian. Yeah. Could be two years before The Mandalorian, but it's not clear what is the furthest point in Ahsoka's timeline we've seen yet. Yeah, yeah, Whether yeah. it's Rebels or whether it's Mandalorian. Yeah, that's why I didn't bring it up because yeah. it's hard to I, place. I wanted to bring it up because I knew if we didn't, everyone on Twitter would just be like, or everybody in the future YouTube comments would be like, why didn't you mention Rebels? Look, Star Wars characters are some of the hardest characters to break down. Because there is just so much information. Yeah, so true. I thank you for listening because um, that that's going to wrap up the lesson and we're going to move also, on to the next Also, if we didn't section. mention every single thing that Ahsoka did in Star Wars history, that doesn't mean that we forgot it or missed it. No, we just, we try our best thank to go much. for the biggest hits. Um, I do want to say that if you wish that we would go into more detail and chat a little bit more about like story and things like that, you can head over to patreon.com slash Jawin and check out our geek history lesson extra where we're going to be doing a bunch more there so go check that out jason let's move on to the recommended reading recommended reading is where you go over to geekhistorylesson.com slash recommended reading and ashley will give her your choice give you a bunch of choices if you want to read more about ahsoka tano you can click on those widgets and you can go straight to amazon you can purchase that reading material yeah so this is a recommended reading coom recommended watching um because most of ahsoka stuff is to be viewed so i am going to recommend ek johnston's first ahsoka book Um, It's my best recommendation that I can give you in terms of a reading experience. It's great for all ages. I am also going to recommend The Complete Clone Wars, the television series. And then I am going to recommend uh, The Complete Rebels television series. I leave it to your discretion whether or not you want to start with that original movie. Because I think it just gets, it goes nowhere but up after that. So just skip to the good stuff. And if you have Disney Plus, they're all in there. Yeah. Well, I mean, not the book. Not the book. So uh, the book, like I said, is really, really good. Uh, Jason, I have but one question for our discussion. I will give you a quick and curt answer. Yes. Um, 
Do you think that Ahsoka should have had a different master, should have been transferred to a different master at some point during Clone Wars? Because that's a discussion I see come up a lot. Really? Yeah, a lot of people say that once Anakin starts to turn, they wish that she'd been, that she'd sensed it earlier and that she'd moved to Kenobi um, or a different master. And I don't know how you expect a Padawan with the least amount of training to know something like that. Uh, There's also no definite point in I Clone agree. Wars where Anakin turns. It kind of is prevalent throughout. It's kind of just always there. Yeah. There's no like there's there's no like Walter White point where the point of no return maybe. Yes, well in Breaking Bad, it bring to, to really weird to compare That's with the Connor Breaking Bad. In Breaking Bad there is a scene at the end of season 2 mm-hmm. where it is like Walt is full on criminal from yeah. that point on. That scene doesn't exist for Anakin. One because I think it's a kid show, but two, I don't think they wanted to I think they wanted to leave that moment for Revenge of the Sith. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't agree with that. One, I would n- absolutely refuse the idea that she should be Kenobi's Padawan because the last Padawan that Obi-Wan should have is Anakin. I agree. Um, but then if she got she got just sent to some side character, then she'd definitely die. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter to me. To I know a, a lot of to people. To be honest with you, it doesn't matter to me. I don't have the character's name pulled up and I apologize for it, but I know a lot of people thought. Kit Fisto? Uh, no, oh, I, can't uh, I know a lot of people thought that I had her. I used to know her name. I just can't remember it. A lot of people thought that because she was a Togruta that she would eventually apprentice under that female Togruta that you see in the original movies oh, or okay. in the prequel the trilogy rather. Yeah. Um, she does have a name. I'm sorry. I just don't have it pulled up. I mean, but. it could also be Kid Fisto. Just saying. It's definitely. No, no, no. I'm not. saying like Ahsoka could have gone to Kid Fisto. No, no. Oh yeah. Kid Fisto so cool. All righty. Let's move he's, into. He's the green Aquaman Jedi. I know. Oh, he's so cool. The teaching tweet, Jason's favorite part of the podcast. Yes, and 120 or 240 or 5,722 characters, Ashley is going to sum up all of Ahsoka in a small enough batch that she can tweet it later on on the GHL Twitter at GHL Podcast if you don't follow us there. Here we go. Let's listen. This is going to be amazing. Ahsoka Tano. Boy, it only took Star Wars almost 40 years to give us a fully functional and well-rounded female character. Thank you. Maybe we want to see who else, because you don't consider Leia a fully functioning character. So I agree in the original trilogy, she's not. I do and I don't. Okay. Leia, for the time, is fairly progressive. Uh-huh. However, in the third movie, she's effectively useless. Mm-hmm. And we are taught and socialized that um, we're supposed to ship her and her um, sexual harasser, who she tells to leave her alone and not kiss her. Yeah. That that's the greatest romance in the galaxy, and I personally take umbrage. No, with that's that. fine. Now, can I ask you? Do, does that improve if you combine General Leia with Leia Organa? If you, if you, so, but but even Ahsoka was created before that. She was. Yes. Um, who also? I'm gonna there, be. I'll be completely honest. Um, I don't consider the Disney Star Wars trilogy in my head canon. Uh, I'm kind of with you on that. And so I can't wait to read the comments on that one. I want. I just want to say. <laughs> Build your own continuity. If you yep. love them, that's amazing. That is more for you. That's but but so like that doesn't factor into my Who, decision personally. Um, are there what other functional females are out there? And the by Star functional, Universe? I just mean like a fully rounded character. I'm just curious. Um, I'm just curious. Uh, no, I'm clarifying for other people. Oh, sure, not, sure, not sure, for sure. you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I would consider Sabine. Oh yeah, great. Uh, choice. I would consider Bo Katan. Hera. Hera, abs- I love. Hera's a great character Hera. on Star Wars Rebels, and she's another character like Ahsoka. I would love to but see still, Hera after episode. Ahsoka. Yes, after Ahsoka, who, um, who really like takes the whole first season to mm-hmm. figure out because she is she's kind of the getaway driver. What about the Sar- kind of, What about the Sarlacc pit? It's female. Why not? It's definitely male. <laughs> just I mean, just from the visual. I'm just trying. That's try- a man. I'm trying. I would also, I would also credit, um, she's not perfect either, but Padme is definitely has more autonomy. Is a step closer. Is a, But she's yeah. not all the she's way there. She's not quite there. No, yeah. but she's a step closer. All right, I, I'm just curious. All right, now we're going to move fair. into the honor roll. Oh boy, we're going to get some crazy comments on that one. But now we're going to move into the honor roll. As long as they're respectful, roll. we welcome them. That's right. <laughs> The honor roll, where if you go over to iTunes and you leave us a five-star review over on Apple Podcasts, we will read it on the air. And if you do that, it helps the podcast grow and find new listeners. So go over and do it. Write whatever you want. 
We'll read it on the podcast. I also want to say that we are currently collecting up our international re- reviews to add to future episodes. So if you are an international iTunes listener, uh, please write your review there and then email your screenshot to geekhistorylesson at gmail.com because we can't access your Apple podcast. But I, I like to wait to collect them and do them all together. Cool. So they're coming up. So we only have but one person. This is a longer episode. Uh, joining our honor roll today, and that is Grenadixis. They don't have enough vowels for me to be able to pronounce this. I apologize. You're amazing. They say, amazing. Found this podcast by accident in March of 2020 because, you know, global pandemic. But it has become one of my absolute favorites. I started with the episode of my favorite character, Nightwing. Oh, nice. A lot of people start with Nightwing. He's a good one. He's hot. And I've almost finished every episode. Keep up the great work, you guys. Thank you. I want to say that... I love when whenever people share their own personal experience. That means so much to me. Oh, they didn't need one of these. Absolutely. Um, But it's, you know, the pandemic has been a real trying time, and it's nice to know that we can be people's friends and companions through that. So thank you for sharing that. Jason, what's going on in the teacher's lounge today? Well, uh, Professor Fowler is over in the corner playing some amazing piano covers, so enjoy. And what does Professor Fowler teach? Piano. Piano covers? Yeah. No, piano. <laughs> piano, okay. There's no class piano covers. I just, I'm in my brain, it's funnier if it's just somebody teaching you how to put those like dust covers over a piano when you're done with it at the end of the no, day. No, I meant covers of I, songs. I know what you meant, oh, yeah. Lord. <laughs> All right, and that is it. Hey, by the way, you can subscribe and listen to... Geek History Lesson everywhere you listen to podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, all those places. Um, and if you know somebody who's a Star Wars fan and you enjoyed this episode, then tell them about this episode. Go ahead and share the love. Um, don't forget that you can suggest future lessons on literally anything at two places on social media. Ashley, where is that? You can do that on Twitter at GHL Podcast or Facebook.com slash Geek History Lesson. Be cool like Austin Joich and at Spider underscore Hawk. And help us curate our future episodes. That's right. And you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Jawin. That's J-A-W-I-I-N. You can follow Ashley on Twitter and Instagram at Ashley V. Robinson. And now we're to hashtag stick around the part where we see if you stayed around after the plugs. Now, Ashley. Yes. What are we talking about? I want to ask Jason, what is better, Star Wars Clone Wars or Star Wars Rebels? Rebels. No contest. Really? Yep. But your boy Obi-Wan is barely in it. He's in actually in quite a bit of Clone Wars. Obi-Wan is also in Rebels, by the way. No, he's not in as much of Rebels as he is in Clone Wars. Yeah, so I, I kind of thought you would go a little more Clone Wars. No. No. Why Why is Rebels better? Because Rebel Rebels, Star Wars Rebels is my favorite Star Wars thing ever. Um, it is because... People are screaming into their phones right now. I don't care. Um, I agree with you. Don't get me wrong. Look, I love Empire Strikes Back. I really do. I do think it's the best Star Wars film, um, but I've always been a television person over movies. Mm-hmm. I like the longer character arcs. I like getting to spend time with a group of people and see them change and grow. And after a very rough first season where Ezra is almost as, as annoying as Ahsoka in the, the, yeah, the yeah, first yeah. season very of that, Clone Wars. Very that. They finally figure out how the show works and that it is a group of individuals desperately searching. It's a group of loners desperately searching for a family and they become each other's family. And to see where each character goes and where each character. And I love as well that even for a kid's cartoon, they don't play it safe. Mm -hmm. Some characters don't make it all the way through the show. Oh, man. And in a show called Star Wars, I think that's important. Um. The, I think it's ridiculous in the new trilogy that everybody survived. There is, a, there's a my favorite Star Wars romance mm-hmm. is in Rebels. Yep, um, of all time, and it's one kiss that you get. Um, and a character who I despised in the first season had a death that made me cry. So Clone Wars is the writing on it is like so good. Clone Wars is good in spurts. Yes, it's good in in in, in places, but consistently, the last two seasons of Rebels mm-hmm. are. Near perfection. Like every single episode is firing at all Or there will cylinders. be maybe one that's less good, but it's still pretty good mm-hmm. versus in Clone Wars. There was always, like I, like I said at the beginning, there's always like four or five that are like kind I, of okay. I, I think in every season of Clone Wars, there's about four or five episodes where you're like, Ooh. I would say including season seven. And including un- the most recent season. Unfortunately, yeah. some of them involve Ahsoka. And some of them are Ahsoka. That's so, okay. That's no knock Rebels. on the character. Do you agree? I absolutely I think it's Rebels by a mile. Agree. I just never... Um, you know, and you do this to me as well. I just never want you to just go, no, and that's it. Oh, that's fair. So, thank you.
You're going to say goodbye to the people? You don't have to. We could just. I was just about to just, say that. I was like, do I have to? We could just drop off and we never could. say goodbye to them ever. Again. Well, this has been Good Chemistry Lesson. <laughs> Uh, we're being a little apprehensive because again, we don't, we don't, man, we, we fired some shots in this one. Uh, well, I didn't even tell you the mean things that the Los Angeles times called Ahsoka when they reviewed the Clone Wars. Fired some shots. (laughs) And, uh, I think we're going to have to duck for some bullets coming back. Some ricochets coming back. Yeah. You uh, you love that ricochet. (laughs) Thank you so much everybody for listening. We hope you enjoyed this episode. I am Jason Snips Inman. I am, oh boy, Ashley Victoria Robinson. Professor Ashley, will you please close out this transmission that is called a podcast. Class is now dismissed, Sky Guys.